Hey, today I am making my everyday salad. So if you've been following me, if you follow me on Instagram or my Facebook page, you see that I post a picture of my meals every single day and every day for lunch I have my everyday salad. And so even though I have a salad every day, it's always different. Um, sometimes it may look the same, but there are a lot of different ingredients in there. So I'm gonna show you how I make the base and then I'll show you how I put one of my salads together. And um, so the one thing, one of the things I always have is a cruciferous vegetable. So today I have a green cabbage, but then I also have these collard leaves. Um, so I'm really into variety. Um, you need a variety of greens to get all the different nutrients because as you can see, th these leaves look totally different. They have different nutrients in them. So cruciferous vegetables are wonderful for um, the liver for um, phase two, I think, of the liver um, for detox and cleansing. It's very um, anti-cancer. It helps to repair DNA, um, as well as being packed full of loads of minerals. So that's why I want to have those. So the first thing I'm going to do, I put everything in my way, so let me move it out of my way. Um, I'm not going to use all of this cabbage. I'm just going to use about maybe a third. So I'm just going to cut right along the stem and cut that side off. That will be enough for me to have for about five days. Now, also with the cruciferous vegetables, they are uh, very hardy. They're a hard um, green, and so it's not going to wilt or get too soft or soggy in my bowl for five days. And so that's another reason why I picked the cruciferous greens. And um, I will add some softer greens to my salad each day. But if I put things like a soft lettuce or any of the, any of the softer greens, they're going to probably kind of wilt, maybe get, turn yellow before the end of the week. And so, so you can see, so this cabbage is pretty firm. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing my hand down on the front of the knife to uh, kind of rock and roll to press through. It's very important to have a really sharp knife and so I should probably sharpen this but you can see i'm cutting it even pretty small um, because when i eat this i want to be able to get a bunch of different things in each bite if i leave the leaves the pieces kind of large then i'm going to have a bite of just cabbage or just carrot or, or something and i like to have a little bit of everything Okay, so after I finish chopping everything else, I may want to add some more cabbage, but this is probably enough cabbage for this week. Um, okay, so I don't have to use this same green cabbage. That's one way that I make it different every week, is this week I have a green cabbage, next week I'll probably have a purple cabbage, um, this week I have these leftover leaves. We had a sushi and wrap night um, one night this week. And so I like to buy these giant leaves so that I can put the filling in there and roll them up like a burrito or a spring roll. And so these were just left over and I thought, well, I might as well throw them in um, for added nutrients. So as you can see, this stem is pretty thick. I'm gonna cut it out. So I'm just gonna run my knife along the stem to remove it. And then I'm going to, see how I just folded it over, it's really big. And then I'm gonna roll it up and just thinly slice it. Collar leaves are pretty thick and chewy, so some people will tell me they don't like the way they feel, but if you chop it really, really small, then you don't notice it as much. I can leave it long, like these ribbons, see how long that is? That'd be wonderful for like some sort of pasta but I want my salad to be pretty uniform, so I'm just gonna run my knife through it this way so the pieces are small to match the cabbage that I already have chopped. Okay, so every week I have at least one, maybe two types of cruciferous vegetables. So that's our base right there. So next week I may use Napa cabbage. I don't know, it could be broccoli, it could be shredded Brussels sprouts, any of those. Um, something else that I always include is carrots. I 
really sometimes I'll put in something like parsnips but I really just like carrots and so that is one of the things that don't really vary um, that much so all I did is cut the roots the uh, not the root but the stem end off the top and now I usually just cut it into thirds and then I'll cut that in half and then keep lengthwise and then cut each one of those in half and then I just line them up with my knife and slice so they're kind of like triangles you can slice it any way you want really does feel like I need to sharpen my knife so if your knife is not sharp enough it could slide on the uh, fruit or vegetable and cut you so it's very important to have a sharp knife Okay, so I always have the cruciferous vegetable, and that's very high in minerals. It helps to repair DNA um, damage, restore your cells, helps with anti-aging. Um, I like the carrots. Um, this orange color, oh, cabbage all over me. This orange color is um, from carotenoids or beta carotene. And so it's a precursor to vitamin A, which is very important for immune health. And it's something that a lot of people who um, have been diagnosed with autoimmune disease are deficient in is vitamin A. So anytime you can add things um, like uh, beta carotene, your orange and your yellow foods, carotenoids, um, and even red, those are wonderful to help boost your vitamin A levels. Um, and then I like to use bell peppers. And so I didn't show you what I did. I cut at an angle around so that I didn't hit those seeds. If you hit those seeds, then they're just gonna disperse. It's a lot of cleanup, and I like to be uh, quick and easy when I can. All right, and so I always lay it skin side down and then slice into strips. And then cut them also into smaller pieces. And so bell peppers are very high in vitamin C, which is also important for immune health. But they also have anthocyanins and lycopene, that's this red color in here, um, which is uh, very antioxidant. Um, so that also help your cells with any damage or oxidation. They're also very high in water. Um, so for anyone who suffers with dehydration, it's really good to eat water-rich foods. And this time of year, it's uh, middle of summer right now where I am and it's, it's just it's really good to eat these water rich foods especially with vitamin c especially when you're in the heat okay something else that i always put in my everyday salad is some form of onion so this week i have these green onions you can see the ends are getting kind of wilty and so i'm going to throw them in i'm going to cut off any of the wilty parts Actually, they kind of froze in my refrigerator. My refrigerator got too cold. Um, so I cut those parts off, and now I'm gonna cut just right here, just get the root end off. Now these could go into that root end, and even these carrot ends can go into my freezer bag in the freezer to make uh, my free veggie broth. And I'm just going to rock and roll over here. When I say rock and roll, I'm just sliding my knife back and forth. You can see the tip doesn't come up. I'm just sliding over the vegetable. So onions are part of the allium family, which is another cancer fighter, um, very antimicrobial, antibacterial. And so that is one reason why I add onions. And so you can put any kind of onion you want. It would have been a really good idea to put a purple onion in here because as you can see, I don't have any purple color in here. I'm missing yellow and purple today. Next is my cucumber. I'm gonna cut both ends off of the cucumber. And whenever I put cucumber in a salad like this, um, cucumbers are very high in water so that if I put a high water content, I also have the bell peppers in there that's a high water content, 
um, it's going to make my salad wilt faster. And so to help with that, I'm going to remove the seeds. So I'm using a melon baller, but you could use a spoon, any kind of spoon. And I'm just going to put it in here and slide down to pop out those seeds. And so I'm gonna do that on all of my pieces. And I'm using cucumber because it, it does have a lot of vitamins and minerals, but also it's very hydrating and they're in season right now. So that's why I have the cucumber in here. I don't always put cucumber in, but when I do, I do always remove the seeds. There's a lot of nutrition in there. I'm gonna be missing that nutrition, but it's gonna help keep my salad a little bit longer. If I were to add tomatoes, I would do the same thing. I would remove the um, seed and the water. You know, they, it's, they're very watery inside the tomatoes. So I would remove that. I'm just, I'm gonna leave them on the side. I have cherry tomatoes, and so I could throw my cherry tomatoes on top and just not even cut them or anything. Okay, so when I have cucumbers, you can cut them any way you want. I like to cut them into strips, like I did the bell pepper. And then I line them up and chop them so that everything is pretty much the same size. Okay, and the last thing that is always in my base salad is celery. Um, celery is a natural salt. It's very high in minerals. Um, I'm just going to cut off this top part here. Also very high in chlorophyll. I mean, a lot of people, they juice it regularly um, because of the high minerals. Some people dry it and grind, grind it um, to use it as a salt because it tastes salty. So I cut it, I didn't show you what I did again, but I cut it into pieces like this. And once again, I'm gonna cut this also into strips. So you can see my salad is all about the same size. Now I could use a food processor and put everything through there, but I find that when I do that, it, it's so small, it just doesn't last as long. The uh, leaves and things start to wilt a little bit faster. And so that's why I hand chop it. But you could always buy something like a coleslaw mix that usually has a cabbage. So that would be your cruciferous vegetable. It usually has carrots. And so th there's your carrot part. Um, and so then you could just add these other ingredients to that if that's something that would make it easier for you and more doable. We have to start where we are. If you don't have time to do your chopping like this, then uh, find another way that you can get a healthy meal in. Using those conveniences is sometimes uh, helpful. And notice I'm even eating the leaves. The leaves are packed full of nutrition as well. So I'm going to add the leaves. For these smaller pieces, I'm only cutting in half. Okay, so there you have it. Here is my base salad. It always has the cruciferous vegetable. Um, it always has carrots and it always has celery. Um, I did add the bell peppers, which you could mix up the colors to give you some more variety and use yellow or purple. Um, I always I don't always have cucumbers, but in the summer I've added cucumbers and to switch it up, I'll use a different kind of cucumber. We grow different kinds here on our farm um, just to add some variety. So when I go to eat this, um, that is gonna be really filling if I only ate that, but I'd probably get pretty bored with it. So I need some variety. You have to look at all the different um, taste profiles. So the celery gives us some saltiness. We have a lot of crunchy. We have some different textures, but we're gonna want some soft textures. Um, we want some sweet, which we have in the carrot, sweet, salty. We want an umami flavor. So I usually will top it with something like dulse or seaweed, um, something to give me that umami flavor. Um, you could add, you could always put it in your salad dressing to give you different flavors. Um, as well, but sweet, we want all the tastes, sweet, salty, sour, um, apple cider vinegar in your dressing or a lemon juice or a lime juice can give you your sour. Anyway, 
and then something soft. So I'll usually put some kind of beans on here, um, or I have hummus on the side, um, nuts and seeds. It's definitely an easy way to bury it that way. Um, so I usually like pumpkin seeds, but pumpkin seeds are sunflower seeds. Sprinkle some pecans on top, maybe some slivered almonds. Some people like to put blueberries in their salads, any kind of fruit like that, even orange slices are delicious in your salad, or apples can be good, or even cherries and then different salad dressings so the possibilities are endless we can turn this into so many different meals um, as you can see if you do follow me you see that i make my salad different every day um, i also will usually add this is a combination of milk thistle black cumin seed and fenugreek and i think there's another video that explains the uh, health benefits of all those but i'll just sprinkle it on my salad every day I always sprinkle a little bit of cayenne. This is a dried cayenne that I dried here at home and then ground, ground it. And I sprinkle that on because there are so many benefits to cayenne. Um, it is very high in vitamin C. Um, it helps with blood pressure, anything heart related. Um, it even helps with leaky gut and healing your intestinal linings. So cayenne's fabulous. So I try to sprinkle that on my salads as well and sprouts so anytime you can add some kind of sprouts that's just so packed full of nutrition i usually grow broccoli sprouts or mung bean sprouts but even azuki beans or um, kohlrabi or radish sprouts those give you a really nice uh, spice with lots of nutrition radishes kohlrabi those are both cruciferous vegetables broccoli cruciferous vegetables so it's another way to get some nutrition in in there anyway i will um, show you how I make my salad with this base tomorrow and um, so that you can see me use all of it anyway let me know if you use a base salad let me know if you like this video and please comment and tell me what else you would like to see and learn like and share my videos just hit the subscribe button below and enjoy okay so now I am making my salad for today and then I'm also making one for tomorrow because I'll be eating lunch away from home tomorrow so the first thing I always do is I just have a spring mix here. I didn't have any from the yard today. So I'm going to put some of the, that down first. These are the soft greens that I don't put in the base salad um, just because they will wilt too easily. And then I have my base that you sh saw me make. And I usually use a cup measuring cup. Um, just to make it easier to scoop. And so I'm going to put some on this salad and some on today's salad. Usually I'll put one or two scoops depending on what else I have to go in the salad. So these pieces are pretty big. I usually cut them a little bit smaller than that. Um, I already ate some of it and it's uh, there's a lot of chewing involved. When you switch from going from eating animal products to eating something like this you need a big salad so this is my dinner plate this is a brownie pan and this is what I take my salad in when I am gonna eat lunch away from home and um, so next I have hummus I try to have something um, like hummus or beans or quinoa or lentils to add some protein to my lunch so I'm gonna put in a scoop of hummus And I'm going to put in a scoop of quinoa. Quinoa is a complete protein, very high in protein. All right. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any tomatoes to add some red to this pretty dish. I already used my tomatoes. All right, so now I'm going to put my dressing on. Now, depending on the type of dressing you have, so this one is an Asian dressing here. Um, I think I have that in a video. Um, this one is just a regular nut-based herby dressing. It's actually my favorite. Um, if I were going to use this one, because it's so liquidy, I would probably put it on the bottom instead of on top of the salad. That way, the whole salad doesn't get all wilty. Um, if I'm eating it right now, of course, I'll put it right on. And um, so I'm just going to, I think I had a smaller spoon here for this. Yes. Spoon this onto my salad. Since it is for tomorrow, if it was, like I said, if I wanted to use the Asian dressing, 
then I would put it on the bottom. Put my dressing on top. Ah, this dressing just smells so good. It's so good. It's a lot like my Mexi Ranch dressing, which is also um, in my list of videos. All right, so then I will add, these are mung bean sprouts, also very high in protein, and B vitamins, lots of nutrients here in sprouts. And then I have broccoli sprouts, which are super high in sulforaphane, which helps with uh, liver detoxification. It also helps with uh, DNA repair. So I'm gonna put some broccoli sprouts on here. Um, and then I always add, this is milk thistle, fenugreek, and black cumin seed that I keep in this little grinder. And so I always grind some of that on there to get those benefits. I always sprinkle some dulse on there. Dulse is a seaweed or sea vegetable, high in lots of minerals and natural source of iodine, which is helpful for the thyroid. And then I have red pepper flakes. I have a hair tickling me. Um, red pepper flakes, which are wonderful for um, cardiovascular health. And even in healing things like leaky gut and things like that. Anyway, something else I would normally do is top it with like pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds. I don't have seeds today. Anyway, so here are my everyday salads for today and tomorrow. Um, if you like this video, please like and share, comment and let me know what else you would like to see or hear or learn about. Um, I would love to share with you um, and enjoy.